Hi, Tracy from Kazavan's Equestrian and welcome to this week's video. This week I'm taking a bit of a look at the suspensory ligament and why it is so important. Okay, before we get into the topic, what I'd like to ask is if that you're new to this channel, please have a look around, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, click like on the video if you get some good information, and don't forget to share this around to all your friends. Um, click the notification bell, and then you'll know every time I release a video, which is normally weekly. So the suspensory ligament, we do hear about it a lot, but what exactly is it, what does it do, and what can happen to it? And why is that so important to us as everyday riders? The suspensory ligament is a ligament that supports the fetlock. It does this in conjunction with the suspensory apparatus, which are sesamoid bones, some of the tendons, and also some of the other major ligaments like the digital deep, deep digital flexor tendon and the annular ligament. Now if you look down a horse's leg, you'll see there's very, very little muscle there. So those structures you can see quite clearly. And if you grab the back of the horse's leg, it almost feels like marine rope. You're looking here at incredibly strong ligaments and tendons. Bear in mind, a tendon is what connects the muscle to the bone. The ligaments are what connects the bone to the bone. So the suspensory ligament runs from or connects above the knee and runs at the back of the horse's leg in between the cannon bone and the other flexor tendons. Just above the fetlock, the suspensory ligament actually divides to either side and connects to the sesamoid bones on either side of the hoof. And then it moves around to the front there and actually joins on with the extensor tendons at the front of the pastern. It provides a very important link between the flexor and the extensor tendons and ligaments around particularly the fetlock and it offers the fetlock an enormous amount of support. So together with the other tendons here, as your horse's hoof hits the ground, the fetlock sinks. Now the fetlock sinks an amount um, that is equal to the amount of force on it. So obviously faster or jumping higher and higher force, the fetlock will drop more. But as it drops, it drops into a sling of these ligaments and tendons. And this works twofold. So those ligaments and tendons are actually protecting the bones from force and it also hides the elasticity in that holds energy so it the force goes down into those elastic ligaments and we get some kinetic or potential energy stored in the ligaments and then as the horse lifts off the ground again it uses that almost like a rubber band to propel the limb forward so you can see that as the foot hits the ground and as the fetlock drops, the tendons and ligaments here, it's really important that they absorb the force of that. And what that does is stretch those as well. They obviously have to have enough elasticity to stretch to take that downward movement of the fetlock. But they also need to be able to pop back into place when required um, and not overstretch. As an example, at a gallop, the um, as the fetlock hits the ground, the tendon there can actually be stretched by as much as eight centimeters. Those ligaments and tendons that are sitting behind the fetlock are very flexible, are very elastic, but they are also incredibly prone to injury. And as you can see by how important their function is, it's also really important that we pick up even minor injuries to these um, connective tissues very, very quickly. For example, the superficial flexor tendon has been shown, and they've done um, tests in a lab to test how much it stretches and how much it would take to stretch to actually rupture. So at a walk, this stretches at about 3%. So as your horse is walking, this tendon will give a 
stretch of about 3%. It increases to about 6 to 8% at a trot, but once you're taking your horse into gallop, the stretch that happens naturally is between 12 and 16%. The thing is that in labs, what they've also tested is anywhere between 12 and about 19.5% stretch, you are getting close to rupturing those tendons. So now we know the level of strain we put on these tendons at the gallop. Um, and remember, let's now include jumping efforts and how a horse's fetlock hits the ground in jumping efforts. And also in the take off of the jump, how much the hind leg suspensory and ligaments in the lower part of the hind legs are taking that pressure also. It's really no wonder that this is a really common area of injury, but it's not just a common area of injury, it's actually a common area where horses completely break down and become unrideable and sadly often even euthanized. So the healthy tissue is made up of type one collagen. This is quite strong, it gives the elasticity, etc. And this is the form of collagen that you want placed in your tendons and ligaments. But once an injury occurs, the body will lay down type three collagen. And this is really laid down in a much more haphazard way. It's also very brittle. This fact makes it um, really, really, really easy to re-injure a tendon or ligament during the healing phase. So remember these type three collagens have laid down and done some repair work. Although your horse to you or a visual may appear that this tendon or ligament is healed, it is in fact maybe not healed and more, more susceptible to re-injury until it is completely healed. This is really important. So any heat, any swelling in the lower part of your horse's limbs, please take really seriously. There are some great emerging technologies through um, veterinary work to be able to scan and look and really give you a good diagnosis and judgment on whether it's a small tear, a large tear, or, or the state of healing of tendons and ligaments. And we really want to use these and be guided by these for your reintroduction to work. At a recent conference, there's been a lot of discussion about these emerging technologies, which are terrific, and a lot of discussion about treatment, management, diagnosis, etc. Some of the cases that are chronic or intermittent or recurring, it's really, really tricky to work out what the prognosis for that horse is. However, the one thing everyone agreed on is that in reality, a minimum recovery time is 12 weeks. So you get your horse pulling a ligament or pulling a tendon, getting some swelling in that area, please don't try to rework your horse if it's under three months. Obviously, this can depend a little bit upon what discipline you're involved in. So if you're just going on some pleasure trail riding, you may be able to embark on that a little bit earlier, but certainly the things that are putting stress like jumping, any kind of galloping, um, any kind of downhill work or fast racing, fast endurance racing, you really want to be giving your horse that three months off or you really risk re-injuring it in a very, very chronic and perhaps um, fatal way, at least for the tendon or ligament. What are the steps to follow if you suspect that your horse has done something to its suspensory ligament? Include your vet straight up Scan it, you know what you're dealing with. And the next thing is box rest, and you need to box rest your horse until they are non-visibly lame at all at the walk. Once they're not lame at a walk, keep them rested as much as you can and try to introduce slowly using hand walking. This way you can control the walk rather than let them out in a paddock where they could just take off into a trot or head down a hill. And what you're trying to do is allow for the realignment of the type one collagen to make that repair as strong as you possibly can. When you do start reintroducing your horse to proper work, please do it slowly, plan it. Don't just do it via your head, 
actually plan so you can see how much time you're allowing your horse to recover. And don't forget in that recovery program to include proprioception. If you're not sure what that is about, please have a look at my video on proprioception because that is the second reason that um, horses re-injure themselves coming back into work. Um, so yeah, first reason, it hasn't healed as much as you thought, and second, they've lost proprioception and you haven't re-calibrated um, or reprogrammed that. So how do we minimize the risk of these types of injuries? Definitely regular, correct, shoeing, trimming. Um, really be aware and, and quiz your trimmer or farrier if you think your horse's toe is looking long or your heel. Have a really good look at the hoof shape. If you're getting a low toe and um, sorry, a long toe and a low heel, you can imagine the stress that is going through that suspensory ligament around that area. And you can also imagine how much more leverage the horse needs to take off from that, which again really um, can lead it to injuries, even in small micro tears, just getting slowly and slowly bigger. Another way to minimize risk is to not push your fatigued horse. If your horse feels tired and you still need to do something from a training or behavioral perspective, drop it down to a walk, get the response you need from a walk and please let your horse rest. Fatigued horses are likely to place their feet wrong and anything can happen. Uneven and poor ground, it, it sort of come to my attention. I think I need to do a video looking at arena surfaces and why they're so very important. Um, but don't work your horse in too deep a ground, especially if they're not fit, not trained, or small horses, fine boned, um, and uneven ground. It can take one wrong step for your horse to snap these ligaments and tendons. Please don't ignore early warning signs. Early warning signs are your friend. You can't rest your horse too much and you can't get overdiagnosed here. What you can do is not rest your horse enough and not get the vet involved and understand how important it is. This is where uh, minor injuries can turn into absolute chronic injuries that can make your horse unrideable. So any heat, any inflammation, any swelling, treat it as very important, particularly in the lower limbs of the horse, front and back. And this is even if your horse pulls up sound. So if you feel a little bit of heat or a little bit of swelling, but your horse is sound, you can't see any um, visible signs of a lameness, please also treat this as if there is something going on because the heat doesn't come from nowhere, nor does the swelling. Thanks for listening. I hope this has been helpful. Once again, don't forget, please subscribe to the channel, click like, comment, share, etc. Um, the notification bill to get notified of when I release next week's video and I'll see you then. Thanks for listening.